Well, here we go again. We want to blame a gun whenever something happened well before a person tried to acquire that gun to kill other humans with. The left is a little upset right now because it's a revolver, one of the oldest guns out there, and a shotgun, one of the most commonly used long guns in America. Not an AR-15. They missed that one. Not a semi-automatic handgun. Darn, that's not going to help make our calls to ban all these things. All this legislation that they were trying to put forth to ban assault weapons and military-style weapons, it's gone. Their focus has got to be, the left's focus has to finally go back to figure out how they ban that gun now, which is not good for us because now that just means they are going to accomplish what they originally intended, which is to ban every single gun out there. Because now they can say every type of gun has been used in a murder of some sort especially a school shooting, because again, the left only cares whenever kids are killed um, in a particular area that is popular, like a suburban area. They don't care about five-year-olds murdered in Chicago ever. They just don't care about that. So geography has a lot to do with it. Oh, we had 10 people killed today. Where were they? How old were they? That's all that really matters to them, not to me. I actually care about all people. That's why we did the research and nobody on the left wants to talk to us about this when we determined that fatherless homes, over-medicated children, and bullied children, all three coming together at one time in today's climate, that's what's creating our little monsters out there. Then they go get a gun. You have already created that monster with that single parent family, single parent home, the over-medicated kid and the bullied kid. You put those three together. Make no mistake, I'm saying you put those three together. I don't think e any one of those by itself is the reason why these kids are going out there murdering classmates. But you put those three together, and that's a hard thing to unravel to make right again. But now, since this kid wasn't an 18-year-old like the Parkland shooter who went out and legally purchased a gun, now there's no real method that they can attack that's legitimate that us law-abiding gun owners do every day. We go out and buy guns legally and they can't attack that process anymore. They can't attack the fact that somebody out there was below 21 and bought a, an AR-15, so they can't attack that because now it was the father's guns that were being used and the kid apparently had access to that father's gun. So what are we going to be talking about now? Now they're going to be trying to put uh, forth the legislation that's going to mandate how you store a weapon now. Now, I am a huge proponent. We do the work that the left won't do. I'm a huge proponent on gun safety. I have put videos out. I have talked to groups of people. I have tried and tried and tried to, to put the importance of properly storing firearms out there. I want people to know how I feel about that. I want people to know that, look, we as responsible gun owners have a huge responsibility, and that is to make sure that our guns are in safe places and that kids do not have access to them to accidentally cause harm to one another or death to one another. Now, this is going to be really awkward, but I'm going to say it anyway. There's a huge distinction between me wanting to keep guns away from a child who might see that gun as a toy or something mysterious and play with it and accidentally shoot themselves. And the other distinction is the very fact that a 17 year old who has made up his mind that he wants to kill people is seeking out that gun so that he can take it and go kill other people. When I store my gun safely in my house, I'm storing it so my nine year old doesn't accidentally come across a loaded gun. I put it in a bedside safe with a biometric key lock on it. My son is not going to accidentally find his way into that box. But if a 17 year old hell bent on killing people because he's made up his mind previous to seeking out that gun, if he wants to get into that bedside safe that people are going to mandate that we have now going forward, he's going to get into that safe. If for some reason you have a safe that is impenetrable, which most families cannot afford, these big giant walk-in safes that you can't use a bomb to get into, come on, a very small percentage of families will ever be able to afford that. Unless you have that, you will not prevent a 17-year-old who is hell-bent on killing humans from acquiring a gun or that gun in that safe. You know I'm right. You know that I'm right. The real thing here is, what happened prior to that? Why are we totally ignoring the fact that this kid 
was determined to murder people and because he had access to a gun, now the gun is the issue and the way that gun was stored is the issue. I don't expect any parent out there who is raising a kid who is educated on gun safety and has shown to be a responsible gun owner, I'm not proposing that that gun be locked and made inaccessible from that 17 year old. Why? What parent out there is thinking my son is growing up to be a, a murderer, a mass murderer? No one is. Let me tell you this, a 17 year old with murderous intentions is no different when he's seeking out a gun to kill human beings with than that guy climbing in your window off the street to steal that gun. That gun was taken without permission. That kid did not ask his dad if he could take that gun to go kill people with. He is no different than any other criminal out there on the street. The real focus should be focusing on the, the, the way that child is being raised. Are we over medicating them? Is he being bullied? Sounds kind of like he was. If you remember the Parkland shooting, remember the little short, angry, ball-headed chick? That kid actually admitted to ostracizing the shooter, bullying the shooter. Yeah, I know they're saying ostracizing, making an example out of a kid and putting him in his own corner and not allowing him to be part of the group of the rest of the school. They're saying that's not bullying. Look, we can debate about what is, is all we want. That is bullying. When you single out a child in school who's already having a tough time and you make them even more isolated from the rest of the group just because, and teachers and adults are playing a part in that too. You know, teachers and adults out there, you got teachers out there that weren't the cool kid in school, right? Well, now they're a teacher and they kind of side with the cool kids because they weren't a cool kid before. Or you got some of the teachers who were a cool kid in school, so they naturally side with the cool kids in school. They're ignoring what's happening to some of these kids out there. They're ignoring the bullying that's taking place. They're ignoring the ostracizing by little angry ball headed people and making examples out of these kids and kind of pushing them into those corners even further than what they already were because now that kid sees that not only do I not have any support from any of my classmates, but now the authoritative figures in my school also are ostracizing me. We've got a huge problem in this country. And it ain't guns.